By the end of this video, you're going to easily be able to solve quadratic equations by factoring. And in about 30 seconds, here's how this video is going to get you there. So we're going to be doing five examples in this video. We're going to do some binomials and some trinomials. And these problems are just going to get harder and harder as we go. So make sure you're watching till the end of the video. Then after we do these five problems, I'm going to give you a problem to try and answer in the comments. And by that point, it should be breezy. And if you're looking for the notes for this video here, and guys, we're not just talking about any old notes here. These notes, they're printable. They have a QR code attached that will take you back to the video. And of course, how can I forget? They have timestamps for each of the problems that we do in this video. So you can jump around however you need. That's the kind of notes that we're talking about here, guys. And if you want the link to those notes, they're going to be right in the description. Also in the description, I have an extra video link that goes through 10 more of these problem solving quadratics. And we're not just going to be solving them by factoring. We'll do some factoring, some factoring by grouping, but we're also going to be solving by completing the square and using the quadratic formula as well. So if you want more practice with any of that, I have that extra video linked in the description down below. So we're going to start off with this quadratic here, x squared minus 36 equals zero. Now, the first thing that I would see here already is that this is a binomial, it has two terms. And so whenever I see a binomial, the first question that I'm asking is like, oh, is it a difference of perfect squares? And here it actually is because we have that difference. That's the subtraction part and we have two perfect squares. Remember, a perfect square is anything that we can take the square root of and get something nice. X squared and 36 are both perfect squares because if you take the square root of X squared, you just get x, that's something nice. Take the square root of 36, that's six, that's something nice. So these are two perfect squares, but what's an example of something that's not a perfect square? Well, five is not a perfect square because if we square root that, we're not gonna be able to get anything nice. You can put that in your calculator, it's just gonna be a super long decimal. So in the x squared minus 36 case, we have a difference of perfect squares. And when we have a difference of perfect squares, we're gonna be able to factor this really nice. We just make one of these sets of parentheses have a plus, one has a minus. The square root of the first term goes in the first two spots. So the square root of x squared is x. And the square root of the second term goes in the second two spots. So we get x, x plus six times x minus six equals zero. And now that we've fully factored this, we can solve for x. What values of x are gonna make this side zero? Well, to figure that out, look at the larger picture here. We have two things being multiplied here. and if let's say the x plus six here, if that was zero, then we're multiplying whatever the heck this ends up being by zero and we do get zero. Also, if the x minus six was zero and x plus six was whatever, some other number, again, we get zero times something which is zero. So those are the two ways that we could get the left-hand side actually equal to zero. So x plus six could equal zero, x minus six, could equal zero. And now we can just solve for x in both of those equations. So subtract six on both sides to solve for x in the first equation. That's gonna give us x equal to negative six. And solve for x in the second equation by adding six on both sides. That'll give us that x is equal to six. And those are gonna be our two solutions. So moving on to the next problem here. Now, instead of having a binomial, we have a trinomial, there's three terms here. And so when I see a trinomial, the first question I ask is, is the x squared by itself? And yes, it is here, the x squared's by itself. There's no like four in front of there, or like a six or a two or anything like that. And when the x squared's by itself like that, what we can do is factor it like normal. So what we can do is find two numbers that had to be the number with the x on it and multiply to be the number without the x. So in this case, we're trying to find two numbers that add to be five and multiply to be negative 36. So to start trying to find those two numbers, let's think of numbers that multiply to be 36. The first example that comes to, to mind in my head is like, oh yeah, six times six and also 12 times three. But I don't see how we could get a five from any of these things by like adding together. And of course, one of these numbers is going to have to be negative because we have to multiply to get a negative 36. We can worry about that though in a little bit. Now, two other numbers that multiply to be 36 are nine and four. That might not be the, the first thing that you think of. And if we make the four negative, then when we add these two things together, if we add nine and negative four together, that's the same thing as nine minus four. And that will give us the five. And when we multiply them, we will get negative 36. So those are going to be our two numbers. So what we're going to do is we're going to factor this quadratic. I'm going to put our x's here. 
and the two numbers that we just found are going to go in those spaces. So we're going to get a plus 9 here, a minus 4 here. It doesn't matter which goes where. So now to solve for x, since this is already factored, remember, either one of these guys could be 0. And if either of them are 0, then you're going to get 0 times whatever the other one is, and you get 0. So it will end up equaling 0. So x plus 9 equals 0 is a possible way to get the left-hand side equals 0. And if x minus 4 was 0, the left-hand side would be 0. So to solve for x in the first equation, we can just subtract 9 on both sides. We get that x is equal to negative 9. And to solve for x in the second equation, we can add 4 on both sides. And that'll give us that x is equal to 4. And right there, we get our two solutions. Now moving on to problem three here, we have a binomial. We have two terms, we don't have three here. And so again, the first question that we ask is, okay, is it a difference of perfect squares? Here it doesn't seem like we're so lucky because 18 is not a perfect square, 50 is not a perfect square. And so the next thing that we wanna be thinking is, well, is there something that both of these two things have in common? Are they a multiple of some number? And yeah, we can take a two out of each of these. So let's factor out a two. If we factor out a 2 from each of these terms, that means we need to divide each of those terms by 2. If we divide 18 by 2, we get 9, so we get a 9x squared. And then if we divide 50 by 2, we get a 25. And remember to add that negative in there. So now, what else can we do? Well, if you look here, if you look really close, this is a difference of perfect squares now. I know you, you might not see it because there, there's this 9 there. You might be used to seeing something like x squared minus 25 and being like, oh yeah, well that's a difference of perfect squares. It is. This is also a difference of perfect squares because remember what a difference of perfect squares is. It's a difference of 25 is a perfect square. 9x squared is also a perfect square because if you take the square root of 9x squared, it's the same exact thing as the square root of 9 times the square root of x squared. The square root of 9 is 3, the square root of x squared is x, the square root of 9x squared is 3x, and that is something nice. If you add something like the square root of 5x squared, that's not a perfect square because the square root of 5, if you rewrite this just as exactly as we did it before here, the square root of 5 is not something nice. So we wouldn't be able to simplify it down to something nice like 3x. So remember that the square root of 9x squared is 3x. We're going to be using that here in just a second. Remember how we factor a difference of perfect squares. We're going to have two sets of parentheses here. One is going to have a plus. One's going to have a minus. We're going to put the square root of the first term in the first two slots. And the square root of the second term, which is 5, in the second two slots. And that is our quadratic in fully factored form. Now, how do we find the numbers that are going to make the left-hand side equal to zero here. Well, it's the same thing as it was before. This two, I mean, that can't be a zero. There's no like x's on it or anything like that. But this three x plus five, if that was equal to zero, you'd have a two times zero times something else. And of course that's zero. It's the same story with three x minus five. So let's solve each of these equations. We can subtract five in the first equation to get three x is equal to negative five. And dividing 3 on both sides, we get x is equal to negative 5 thirds. In the second equation, we can add 5 on both sides and get 3x is equal to 5. And again, divide 3 on both sides and we get x is equal to 5 over 3. And there you go. Those are your two solutions for this quadratic. Now moving on, here we have a trinomial again. Remember what I said is the first question that we ask when we see a trinomial. Is the x squared by itself? In this case, it's not. It's got that 2 on there. And so what we're going to do now is see, can we pull that 2 out? Can we factor a 2 out of this entire quadratic? And in this case, yeah, we actually can. Both of these are multiples of 2. So I can factor that 2 out and I can get the x squared by itself. When we want to factor a 2 out, that means we divide each of these terms by 2. If you divide the 2x squared by 2, you get x squared. Divide the 14x by 2, and you get a 7x, because 14 divided by 2 is 7. Then divide 16 by 2, and you get 8. Remember that negative there. And that's equal to 0. 
Now, at this point, we have a quadratic that has the x squared by itself. And what that means is that we can just factor it like we did for problem two. It's the same exact thing. We want to find here two numbers that add to be seven and multiply to be negative eight. And here's a little bit of a hint here. Watch closely. This is a hint that you are going to see pop up again and again when you're factoring things. If the two numbers here are one apart, like seven and eight, and don't worry about the negatives at all. Seven and eight are one apart. That means that your two numbers most likely are going to be the number that you're trying to multiply to get and one. The only thing is, now you have to actually think about the negatives here. We need them to multiply to be negative eight, not eight. So we got to put a negative strategically in there. So is the negative going to go on the eight or the one? Well, it's going to go on the one because if we add these two numbers together now, eight plus negative one is the same thing as eight minus one, that's seven. So those are going to be our two numbers. So what we do is we put those two numbers right here. So plus eight and a minus one. And now, we just need to figure out what values of x are going to make this left hand side zero. If the x plus 8 was a zero, then we'd have 2 times 0 times something else. It'd be zero on the left hand side. Same story with x minus 1. So we subtract 8 on both sides. We get x is equal to negative 8. And if we add 1 on both sides of the other equation, we get x is equal to 1. And those are our two solutions. Moving on to the last problem for this video. Here is another quadratic that has the, it's another trinomial that has the x squared that's not by itself. We got that four there. And here you're going to see if we tried to factor that four out, we would have to divide these pieces by four, the 19 and the five. That's not going to work well. We're, they're not going to divide evenly. So we can factor by grouping instead. And something else that you could do here too, if you know the quadratic formula, you could use the quadratic formula to solve it. You could have done that in any of these five problems actually, but factoring by grouping here is not gonna be too hard at all. What we're gonna do is we're gonna find two numbers that add to be this middle number again, but instead of just multiplying to be negative five, they're gonna multiply to be negative five times the number out in front of the x squared. So four times negative five, that's negative 20. And so we want two numbers that add to be 19 and multiply to be negative 20. The way that you can remember how to do that is that factoring by grouping is often also called the AC method. And the reason why it's called AC method is because the two numbers that you have to multiply together are the A and the C. And that gives you your number over here. So what are two numbers that add to be 19 and multiply to be negative 20? Well, again, this is the same trick that I was just talking about in the last problem. These two numbers ignore the negative are one apart. And so I guarantee our two numbers that we're going to want is going to have a 20 and a one. It's going to be this number and one. Since this is a negative though, we got to just figure out where to put the negative. And well, if we put the negative on the one, we get 20 and we add the negative one. And that's the same thing as 20 minus one that gives us the 19. So what we do now is we split up this middle term into the two numbers that we just found. We get four X squared plus We'll do the 20x first. It doesn't matter which number that you do first. The minus one is going to go next. So it's going to be minus a one x, which you can just write as minus x. And then we do the minus five. You see, I split that 19x up into 20x and a minus x. And you can always check while you're doing these problems. Does this give me the 19x back? So now that we've done that, we split this down the middle into our two groups and we see what can we take out of each group? Well, in the first group, we can take out an x because they both share an x. They're both also multiples of four, so we can take out a four. So a four x is gonna come out of there. If we wanna factor out a four x, we divide each of these pieces by four x, take a four and an x away from there, you're left with just an x. And if you wanna take away a four x here, the x's go away and 20 divided by four is five. So that's what happens with your first group. Now with your second group, what do they share in common? Well, they both are negative, so we can factor out that negative. So we can factor out, uh, essentially when you factor out a negative, you're factoring out a negative one. You don't have to include the one if it doesn't help you. But if you factor out a negative here, you're left with just the positive x. 
factor out a negative here and you're left with a positive five. So you can either write it like this or you can get rid of the one and write it like this. They're the same thing. But I'm gonna leave that one in here because it, I think it'll help to see what we're about to do. What we can do is see what are these two groups now that we've got, what do they have in common? And I just underlined it before, it's the x plus fives. So factor out the x plus five. Take that out of there. What are you left with in the first group? You're left with a four x. And what are you left with in the second group? You're left with a negative one. And that's why I said to leave that one in there because it makes it easier to see that you have a one left over. So now, okay, what is what values of x are gonna give me zero? Well, like we've been doing, that's gonna be when x plus five is equal to zero and also when 4x minus 1 is equal to 0. In either of these cases, the left-hand side will end up being 0. Solving the first equation, we just need to subtract 5 on both sides. In solving the second equation, we'll need to add 1 on both sides, and then we got to deal with that 4. and we deal with that four, apparently I'm, not, I'm just not gonna talk about it and I'm just gonna do it. Um, we divide by four on both sides here and that will give us our second solution, one four. And those right there are our two solutions. So assuming that you're feeling pretty comfortable now with solving quadratic equations by factoring, here's a problem for you to try and answer in the comments. Here we have three x squared plus 10 x plus seven. Now this is a trinomial, so the first thing that you're gonna ask is, okay, well, is the x squared by itself? You're gonna see that it's not. And then you're gonna be like, well, can you factor it out from this entire quadratic? And if you can, great, then you're gonna be able to factor like normal. If you can't, then you're gonna wanna factor by grouping. So try that problem out and let me know what your answer is in the comments. And if you have any questions on anything we talked about in this video at all, especially the factoring by grouping stuff, let me know what your questions are in the comments and I'll try to get back to you when I can. Now again, if you're looking for some more practice with this stuff, especially if you have like a quiz or a test coming up, I do have that extra video linked in the description where we go through 10 more problems solving quadratic equations, but this time we don't just do regular factoring, factoring by grouping, we also do completing the square and the quadratic formula. So if you're looking for that video, you want that extra practice, the link is in the description. And remember the notes for this video are also there too. And lastly guys, make sure that you're subscribed to the YouTube channel. And actually, while you're at the whole subscribing thing, you guys think I should wear glasses in my videos? Like they're blue lights, so they're gonna help my eyes and stuff. But like, you can probably see the rings in the glasses and I feel like that kind of throws people off. So I don't know if this is really a good look or not. I don't know, let me, let me know what you think in the comments. But anyways guys, yeah, that's gonna do for this video and I'll see you soon.